market for a 10% wage hike. Dr. Kanyam Dambo reports. Finance Minister Enoch Odongwana will have to walk a tight rope when he delivers the medium-term budget policy statement in Cape Town tomorrow. This year's medium-term budget will come against the backdrop of several failed negotiations between government and the public service. Public service unions have high expectations, including for Treasury, to concede to their demands for a 10% wage increase in the fiscal framework. Speaking on behalf of Kasatu's Joint and Dating Committee, which represents the public sector, Simon Kungwani says they're not willing to accept any less. And we hope that our minister has a vision to see our country out of recession and out of the economic woes that we see. The unions will have to contend with Treasury's plans to slash the bloated public service bill by 160 billion rand between 2020 and 2023 and an additional cut of 143 billion rand in the 2024 financial year. The unions also want governments to address the employee housing scheme. Nobukai Mdambo, Eyewitness News. And in other news, Gauteng Education MEC Matune Chilwane says the leaking of the PIC final year exam papers risks making a mockery of the National Senior Certificate. The MEC has issued a stern warning to grade 12 pupils and department officials to safeguard the credibility of this year's final exams. Close to 200,000 matrics across the province have signed a pledge not to cheat in the upcoming final exams set for the 31st of this month until the 7th of December. While the MEC is hoping that the grade 12 learners will honor this pledge, he says his department has bolstered security measures at more than 1,000 examination centers to ensure an evident free exams. Veronica McQuadi reports. So in terms of security, our security has been beefed up. We can confidently say this year there will not be a leakage. A confident housing education MEC, Matune Chilewane, is adamant that there will not be a repeat of the 2020 exam leak scandal where pupils had access to the mathematics and physical sciences paper to exams just hours before people sat down to write. We have appointed also service providers to assist to augment our security at districts. We've got armed escorts that will be guiding our exam papers. We've got the responsibility. We've also set up surveillance, CCTV cameras in all our venues to ensure that everything is tight, tight, tight. So we're certain that this year there won't be a leakage. In addition, the MEC says the department will keep a close eye on various points where question papers are printed, stored, and transported. Veronica Mahwadi, Eyewitness News, Johannesburg. And messaging platform WhatsApp seems to be still down across some parts of the globe, with thousands of users still reporting being unable to send or receive messages. Outages are currently being reported in India, the UK, and here in South Africa. This means that WhatsApp's web service is also offline. It's the number one trending topic on Twitter right now with users from around the world complaining on the social media platform that the app is not working. WhatsApp, which is owned by Meta, is yet to tweet any news about the outage. Gold's trading at $1,643.89 an ounce, the rand is at 1844 to the dollar, 2088 to the pound, 1880 to the euro. French crude oil is at $92.65 a barrel. Heading towards the global CBD, there is more than a 30-minute delay in Denver on the M2 westbound between Cleveland and Kosovo Drive. And in four ways, uh, traffic lights not working at William Nickel and the N1. Look at your weather for today. Fire conditions at Gauteng becoming partly cloudy with isolated showers expected. Temps are peaking at highs of between 29 and 32 degrees. It's the breaking story in eyewitness news this hour. The High Court in Joburg has ruled in favour of Mpo Palaze, who had challenged her dismissal as Joburg Mayor. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune and independent. For the latest, visit ewn.mobi. Clement Maniatella. On 702. Let's walk the talk on 92.7. And 106 FM. After 11 o'clock, welcome. This is the final hour of the Clement Maniatella show. My goodness, this country, hey? Now the Johannesburg High Court has ruled that the city council's special sitting 
that ousted the mayor was unlawful. And the question is, what's going to happen next? I can tell you, the ANC as we speak, or even the city of Johannesburg, the mayor's office is probably preparing papers, and they're going to appeal it. And you know that legal principle, right? Once you appeal, that suspends the order. So the mayor can't even go back to the office immediately. Once the mayor's office appeals this decision, this ruling by the Joburg High Court, um, and then things are going to stay the same until that appeal is heard. And the question is, when is that appeal going to be heard? But at the end of the day, even if Mpopalata somehow succeeds and the appeal is rejected, if, if Colin Makurele today calls in a special city and follows all the right processes, that doesn't change the reality that the DA doesn't have the numbers. The same people that voted for Mpopalata to be ousted and then voted for Dada Morero to come into office are the same people that are going to vote against the DA. So Dada Morero, whether you like it or not, with the numbers that he has, is going to go back to that mayoral seat. And Mpopalata stands no chance, especially now, given that the DA's federal executive has decided to reject the proposal to work with the EFF. They don't have the numbers, so they, this judgment in the Johannesburg High Court doesn't really mean much, because the numbers is what exactly is speaking. Remember when she spoke to us yesterday? I asked her, why do you still refer to, to yourself as the mayor of Johannesburg? And she explained why. It's almost like she knew what was coming, hey? Eh? Why are you still calling yourself the executive mayor of Johannesburg on social media platforms? Well, the court must rule, and after the court has ruled, then they will decide what is the actual position. But, but then you still call on the mayor of Johannesburg to account on certain things. So what is it? Do you recognize the mayor or not? Well, he's invaded the office legally, hasn't he? I mean, I couldn't sit there and have a private out daily as to who the mayor is, so I had to be the bigger man and I had to step aside. And in the meantime, he's invaded the office and he's what? Yeah, that's what she told us yesterday when we spoke to her on the show. The question now is, what happens next? I think the mayor's office is going to appeal. Once that appeal is on, that suspends the order of the court. That's going to be a couple of months before the appeal is heard. But even if we're not even looking at processes around the appeal, Colin Makubele, as I say, can call a special city. And people can vote again. And I can tell you, Popalate stands no chance. Unless the DA somehow does something miraculous and manages to get some of the people who voted with the ANC the last time to change their vote and come and sit with the DA. It's 13 minutes after 11. 702. World of work. On our World of Work feature today, we're talking about the importance of emotional intelligence in a team, in a workplace. You can't avoid disagreements in the workplace, right? How many of you have been working and you've never had disagreement? You've never experienced any conflict. The question is, how do you deal with that? Do you deal with that in a mature manner? Or do you cause a scene? Or you hold personal grudges? Because emotional intelligence is that ability to regulate and manage your emotions. It's a critical skill that can contribute to having a positive working relationship with people. So are you working with someone who lacks emotional intelligence? Why don't you share your experience with me on 011-883-0702. We'll talk about just why emotional intelligence is important in the workplace, in your team, and how do you go about handling someone or people who lack that emotional intelligence in the workplace? And I want to know, because often people say, ah, because I lack emotional intelligence, does it mean I'm doomed for life? not necessarily the case. The stuff that you can do to become more emotionally intelligent, intelligent, not everybody is born with these emotional skills. There are things that you can do to help improve your ability to understand and reason with emotion. Dr. Melvis Majura is an adult development and leadership psychologist who's going to guide us through this discussion. Dr. Majura, thank you for making time. Good morning. Good morning and thanks for having me. I'm looking so, forward to the conversation. Yeah, let's start with why.